Hi everybody, tonight we're going to talk about banking and money creation. We'll talk about three things. We'll talk about the role of banks in the economy. We'll talk about bank regulation, what it is and why we need bank regulations. And we'll also talk about how banks create money. Now out of these three, we'll spend the most time on the first and the third. Bank regulation is something that's covered pretty well in your book, and I don't think there'll be a huge piece on bank regulation on the exam, but we'll touch on it. Okay, let's talk about the role of banks. What do banks do? Well, banks accept deposits and keep them safe. That's the primary role of a bank. They also make loans to borrowers. What do those borrowers do? They turn around and they use the money to build things, to buy things, to make investments. Well, how does this work out for everybody? Well, depositors get security for their money. Borrowers get the means to create things, to grow the economy, and banks make money in those transactions. Now, banks keep only a small amount of what they take in in those deposits. What they do is they take what's not required for them to hold on to, sometimes called reserves, and they loan out the rest, and that's how they make money. So they take a small amount of money in deposits, they then turn around, and they loan out the rest of it. And that's really where the economy grows as a result of the banking system. Now, governments tell banks how much to keep in reserve, or sometimes known as the reserve ratio, happens to be right now around 10%. In order to understand how banks make money and understand how they create money for the money supply, let's use something called a T account. A T account is nothing more than a simple kind of balance sheet. It looks like a T, that's why they call it the T account. On the left side it has assets, right side it has liabilities. Said another way, assets are what I own, or in this case what the bank owns. Liabilities are what I owe, or what the bank owes. Loans are assets that the bank owns. Cash reserves are assets that the bank owns. Deposits are liabilities. Deposits are liabilities because although the money is sitting in the bank's vault, that's somebody else's money. So ultimately, I owe that should somebody come and ask for it. Let's take an example here. Main Street Bank. Main Street Bank has $2 million in loans, has $200,000 in cash reserves, and $2 million in deposits. The reserve ratio, the money that they're required to keep in the bank, is cash reserves over deposits. And again, that reserve ratio is something that is mandated by the Federal Reserve. In the case of 10%, we can see here that the bank is maintaining the appropriate amount of, uh, excuse me, the appropriate amount of reserve ratio. And in this case, I'm sorry, I transposed the 200000 and the $2 million here in the example. Should be $200,000 in cash reserves over $2 million in deposits. I'll, I'll fix that. Again, mandated by the Board of Governors. The guy in the middle there sitting down is Ben Bernanke. He is the chairman of the Federal Reserve. Board of Governors are all around him. We'll learn more about him and the rest of those folks. Okay, now that we've seen what the T-account looks like, let's talk about how banks create money. Here's an example. Lucy has $5,000 and she decides to open a checking account at the Main Street Bank. Cash reserves, 5,000. Liabilities, 5,000. Why is that? Well, she deposited 5,000. Now the bank has assets of $5,000 in cash that are loanable. Step two, Main Street Bank makes a $4,500 loan to Mitch so he can make a down payment on a car at Hannah's used cars. What does that do to the bank's asset and liability T account? Well, blue in loans shows an increase so they now have a loan of $4,500. They've seen a decrease in cash reserves of $4,500. Why is that? Well, they made the loan to Mitch, so that money went out the door. Deposits, there's been no change because nobody deposited money after Lucy had made that $5,000 deposit. So, step three, Hannah, who now has $4,500 of Mitch's money, takes it and deposits it at her bank, which is the Cherry Creek Bank. Let's see what happens to Cherry Creek Bank's T account. Well. Assets, there have been no change to loans because Cherry Creek didn't issue a loan as a result of this. Their cash reserves went up $4,500 when Hannah deposited that money. And their deposits went up when Hannah put that money in there. Now, step four, Cherry Creek, Cherry Creek Bank keeps 10% in the reserve ratio, as we've seen, and makes a $44,050 loan to Molly. Well, what does that do? Well, let's go through the steps. Step one, Lucy opened a checking account with $5,000. Step two, Mitch took out a $4,500 loan to buy a car. 
Step three, Hannah deposited the $4,500 in her bank. And then that bank was able to loan Molly $4,050. Remember, they had to keep $450 in reserves. So what happened here in terms of creating money? Well, that initial deposit of $5,000 from Lucy actually created additional M1 money supply of $8,550. And you can see that happened in the form of step two, where Mitch took out a loan, and step three, where Molly took out a loan. So that $5,000 created $8,550. Money multiplier. Let's discuss what that is. Well, the key to the example we just talked about is that the reserve ratio was 10%. That 10% though left meant that the bank could loan out the remaining 90%. 90% is what's called excess reserves. Excess reserves are simply total reserves minus the required reserves or the reserve ratio. The money multiplier shows us how much $1 in reserves, excess reserves, can grow given a reserve ratio. So here's what the, here's what the, the uh, equation looks like. Money multiplier equals 1 over the reserve ratio. From our example where the reserve ratio equals 10%, money multiplier would be 1 over 0.1, which is 10. So initial excess reserves of $4,500 would create, at the end of the day, if we went through more than just those four steps, we'd have $45,000 in new M1 created over the course of all those transactions. So again, a very small amount of money with one person's deposit grows over time into a lot of loans. And in this case, it's growing 10 times from $4,500 to $45,000. All right, that is it for this evening. Have a great one, and I will talk to you tomorrow.